All right, guys. Boom. 5, 10 a.m. Sunday. Closing out the 100-mile week with the Hoka Skyward X. Bang. Top-tier shoe right now for me. I absolutely love this thing. And we are going to get eight treadmill miles. I thought I needed 10 today. This was probably my highlight of the week. I thought I needed 10 today. And then I looked at my Strava and it said 92 miles. That was honestly the greatest feeling. So we can just close it out with eight this morning. I'm not going to be a hero. I'm not, I could have done 10, but I'm not going to be a hero. Do I look like a hero? No, I don't. I look blind because I forgot my glasses. I think this is the one time this has happened to me. I was trying to sneak out of the room again like I did yesterday. And I did it successfully, but I forgot my glasses. But you know what? You do not need glasses to run on the treadmill. So, there you have it. I think I have everything else, though. I have my water. I have my shoes, most importantly. I have the hotel key card so I can get into the gym. But I don't have my glasses, but it's okay. But man, those, the early mornings. Oh, my hotel key card's not working, okay. Off to a rocky start. Go to the front desk. Hey, uh, my key card is not working. I'm trying to get into the gym. Oh, this guy's not allowed. Oh, okay. That's weird. Yesterday I was able to get in there at like 4:30. Out here trying to get these early morning miles in. They gotta unlock the gym for me. They said the key card was fine. You just, I'm just up before the security guards, bro, putting that work in at the, the double tree owned by Hilton. Ah, uh, thank you. Ah, uh, thank you. on the track. Ah, oh, you're the man, bro. Thank you. Boom. Shout out to Arturo. That's my guy right there putting in work. All right, guys. Let's go. Eight miles on the treadmill in the Skyward X. I'm excited to just close it out. Yeah, close it out here. These miles are a little bit of a celebration because I didn't know if I was gonna be able to get 100 this week just because of how crazy the schedule was. So it's a celebration that we were able to do that. And it's just supposed to be, supposed to be fun, man. This sport is supposed to be fun. So gonna have some fun, gonna bump some tunes. Yesterday I was listening to the Conway album and the Gunna album. I think I'm gonna listen to the new Chief Keep album, Almighty So too. The love so so. And then yeah, graduation day number two this morning. I think we might get some bagels before and then pop home after the graduation. I, I'm yeah, what I was gonna say is I'm just excited to put this week behind us. I'm tired. I can hear it. I can feel it in my voice as I'm talking right now. Another 5 a.m. wake up. I bumped to 5 a.m. I was going to do 4.30, and then I said, uh-uh. So 4.30 yesterday, 5 a.m. today, I think 4.30 on Friday. Man, tomorrow I'm sleeping in until 7.05, man. <laughs> All right, treadmill, let's do it. Not gonna be dehydrated today. Might be blind, but I will not be dehydrated. Alright guys, 
Hold on, let me pause this. Bro, this album is absolute flames. Fire. This is the most epic collection of beats I think I might have ever heard on a rap album. No exaggeration here. Almighty So Too by Chief Keef. Fire. I actually think I think Chief Keef might be one of those those underrated geniuses where he started at su- such a young age. He was 16 when Love Sosa came out, when Don't Like came out. We're actually the same age, but he was 16 when that came out. And he's just a savant, man. He can he can flow over these beats so effortlessly. He has such an ear for putting the right collection of beats together. And his last his last few albums have been absolute fire and he's not trying to make club hit anthems. He just makes straight up bangers. This is it's the perfect it was the perfect album for running on the treadmill this morning. And I think, man, it's like the Skyward X. It might be my new my new go to. But Almighty So Too by Chief Keef. Highly recommend it. There's a few different albums that came out over the past few days or on Friday. The Gunna album, Chief Keef and Conway. And weirdly, the Conway album was my least favorite. It feels like he's still trying to figure out what he's doing post Griselda. And the beat selection wasn't my favorite. He's getting wiped by all the features. My man got washed by Tech Nine, and then and the beat was horrible. And he tacked a third verse on the end there to try to save himself. And the next song, I've never been so happy to hear Jay Worthy in my entire life because Jay Worthy comes on the next song. And then he got wiped by Jay Worthy. He got washed by Absol. He just he was getting washed by all the features. Anyway, it's a good time for music right now. The Gunna album was also solid. People were telling me that it all sounded a little bit the same. I don't really understand that complaint because with Gunna, you're just he's curating a vibe. So, it's going to sound pretty similar. That's I like when albums sound pretty similar. It's, they have a cohesive athe- aesthetic. But there we go. Bang, 8 mile recovery piece, average 753 pace in boom, the Hoka Skyrodex, which is the chief keef Oh, just kidding. I don't know. I don't even know what that would be. The chief keep of running shoes. But this is a fire shoe, man. I told you I was going to wait till this morning to to see if I would put it in my all time favorite shoe list. I don't know if I would call this my all time favorite shoe because the nostalgia factor of the Adidas Ultra Boost that I put 700 miles on. And then I actually threw it out before this last move, which was super foolish of me. But the nostalgia factor of that. I don't know if I could beat, but we got people coming here, so I'm probably going to have to stop talking soon. But graduation day two today. Let's keep it moving out of here. I'm not going to be that guy. I don't think she's going to be listening to Chief Keef. Let me just tell you that. We are not going to be dehydrated today. I'm telling you, it's my mission. Watch, I'm going to chug this whole thing right now. Just kidding, I'm not going to do that, but we should do a little refill before we get up there. And yeah, I'm gonna pop out real quick and just do a little bit of a breakdown of the ride. Another beautiful morning out here. Crazy. All right, guys, we're in the the pool room here, so let's just do a quick little breakdown and look there's steam now i keep saying steam mist coming off the pool over there as well but last few things i wanted to say about the skyward x man this this is definitely my favorite shoe of this year if not of all time and it's all about the midsole in this guy so running warehouse measures this at 49 millimeters so you get almost 50 millimeters of stack in the back you get the two foams with the plate but you can't feel the plate that's the beauty of the shoe with most plated training shoes you can in some way shape or form feel that there's a plate in here the other shoe that you can't really feel there's a plate in at all is the boston 12 and this is there's some elements of it that are similar that light strike pro the dense bounce i really like that and with my running style with my size and I'm 160 pounds, but 6'2". And w- with that, I like having a little bit of that denser foam feeling. And man, it's just perfect. The way that they have the Piba tuned, which is sitting above the plate, and the super critical EVA is below. And the other thing is a lot of these shoes that use the dual foam, they'll put a standard EVA foam on the bottom, which is very firm. That's what the Boston 12 does. That's what the Audi Zero SL does. That's what, I think that's even what the Solomon shoe does. But here you got that super critical EVA 
which is softer. So we have about 120 miles on it now. We are starting to see some wear back here, but this is for sure sitting in my favorite shoe of 2024 spot right now. So thank you, Skyward X. It is time to go pack up the room and hit graduation number two. So today, the graduation today is gonna be with uh, the whole university. Yesterday was just the business school. So it's gonna be interesting to have all the people there. It's gonna be, I don't know how many people, thousands of people. Yesterday was probably a few thousand. Today is gonna be multiple thousands of people. And the commencement speaker, guys, is Jerry Seinfeld. So <laughs> I'll see if we can snag some some Seinfeld bits for you all. That'll be fun. Seinfeld was a little before my era, but I had family friends who were big fans of Seinfeld. And I'm a huge curb guy, of course. I mean, how could I not? And my life is like curb sometimes. I think that's how we all feel. We all got a little bit of Larry David in us. Ooh, they're all coming. I just need one. All right, here we go. Yeah, we have to pack up the hotel, so. Car the kids are sleeping probably see you guys in a bit what's up buddy i'll push it once it's all packed up okay all right all packed up and ready to go thank you double tree suites hotel room review great yeah yeah, no stove in the double tree suites. I think was it Homewood has that? I think all of the houses have empty. This room is worth it. Yeah. Six hundred square feet, baby, ballin'. Alright. Alright, let's do it. Hey, if you want a job, you can hold this. Can you go from the other side and push? Can you push right here? He needs a push. Rogue fox and rogue shoe. Daddy, can I press it? All right, breakfast, Durham Food Hall. Shout out to this place. They have a fire bagel spot and a fire coffee shop. Let's do it. Look at this liturgy beverage company. Everything bagels. Let's go. Nashville hot tempeh. That sounds fire. Nashville hot tempeh. I'm not gonna influence your order. And whenever I do it, it messes it up. So you just go on and do it whatever you want. One step, everybody knows the rules. <laughs> Glimmer of hope. <laughs> Look 
Look at that fire mom drip. The stripes with the plaid and then those high lows. Swag, bro. Yeah. I think it's better to wear a The bagel place? Yeah. Mm. Do you see how many bags are just waiting on uh, But it takes them a long time to yeah. actually assemble the food. Like, I think it's like the have, Starbucks drive there. Well, I think they only have one person working. Yeah. No, it's not. It's they're, they're always very attentive. What's that? Yeah, Charlie pointed out that we're in Durham, which is landlocked. So it's a little bit of an interesting title for a seafood restaurant. Yeah, Lake Norman. It's a whole lot of bagels in this. This looks crazy. Yeah, looks like pepperoni. That's pretty good. <laughs> One bite, everybody knows rules. She said fire. Mmm. Carrots? Alright, Nashville hot tempeh, one bite, everybody knows rules. Fire. Worth the seven minute wait that everyone was complaining about. Mmm. Tastes like lox. Right? Yeah. Just smoked carrots. Hmm. I feel like you usually don't like stuff like that. All right, bagel number two. Everything bagel, at everything bagel, boom, look at that. The scallion cream cheese, fire. Parking. All right, time for the big drip. The real MVP. All right, guys, we're off. Full graduation regalia. Bang. Hobby Jugger hat's not coming off. And we got the cloud eclipse on for ultimate comfort. <laughs> Time to graduate, baby. Let's go. I graduated yesterday, but this is the official degree conferral ceremony. No, I think you're supposed to just get in line. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if you got the drip on and you got the ID, they let okay. you in. Oh, thanks. Show us an ID and open gown. Open gown to the I'm like halfway. If you look back, you'll see me. Oh, right there. <laughs> All right, we're in past security, man. They almost tried to confiscate the camera. I had to tell them, no, this is real hobby jogger stuff right here, man. We bring the camera comes everywhere, the hat comes everywhere. Oh, look at this. This is the Duke Duke practice football facility right here. That's cool. 
And this is giving me real memories of undergrad, which wasn't that long ago, but just seeing the excitement from all the undergrads, it's cool. Man, it is already getting hot. The watch says 62, but that's a lie. Feels like about 78, and these robes are hot. Bro, I swear I just saw some guy rocking streak flies to the graduation. Put some respect on that guy. He's somewhere over there. Pull up with the streak flies. Fuqua? Yo, guys, I think we're going. Oh, sorry. All right, we're here, ready to go. Hey, pull up with the Air Forces. Bang. I feel like I'm at an Alabama football game. Hey, shout out my man. Oh, we're on the big screen, here we were. It's like a... But it does have your Are you graduating? Yes. You gotta make sure you're sitting in one of these two lines. You can keep doing what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. Are you all friend group right now? Yes. I was gonna say, if y'all want to hop in the second line together, that way we even this out. Second line, if you're not with that group. I thought it was good. 
welcome the candidates from the School of Medicine. All right, they said there's section 22. So there's somewhere over there. Can't see them though. I see Mason. I see Mason. She can't see me, but I see Mason. Yeah. No way. Yeah, I asked them what what section they're sitting. They're sitting in 22. And they're like right to the left of the sign. And I can see my daughter in the red pants. But they're also all the way at the back row because she has the stroller and everything. Yeah. Hey, my man pulled up in the Nimbus. Bang. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> oh, they did give us water. Yeah. Alright, we're seated, locked, loaded, ready to go. I'll see you guys in a bit. Not sure if I got it on camera, but that was Nina King, the AD of Duke. Absolute boss. Took a class with her. Fire. She's a beast. And that's Jerry Seinfeld over there.
beam with smiles that can paint the sun and rays of glory. We marvel at the wonders of your all-inclusive love. With the song of the cicadas buzzing through the trees and the tune of birds whistling in the wind, all creation joins this celebration today. Alongside Duke fans and Shannon, watch both John Shire and Carol Lawson bust Obama's brackets through unthinkable upsets. Someone pulled up with a service dog. <laughs> I can't imagine how sick you are of hearing about following your passion. I say, the hell with passion. Find something you can do, that would be great. If you try something and it doesn't work, that's okay too. Most things do not work. Most things are not good. You know this already from your short lives. You leave the house, you come back. How was pie and hard? Eh. <laughs> it was okay. That 
that's why everyone tries so hard to get in here. Duke actually is really good. The school is the square handicap button that opens the broadhead doors to your life. <laughs> Since those heavy wooden doors at the West Union, those will kill you. <laughs> Let go of this idea that you have to find this one great thing that is my passion, my great passion, with your shirt torn open and your heaving pec muscles. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> Just be Don't willing to do me. your work as hard as you can with the ability you have. We don't need the heavy breathing and the outstretched arm from your passion. It makes co-workers uncomfortable and <laughs> next week. Find fascination. Fascination is way better than passion. It's not so sweaty. I will give you my three real keys to life, no jokes, in this part. Okay, they are, number one, bust your ass. Number two, pay attention. Number three, fall in love. Number one, you obviously already know whatever you're doing, I don't care if it's your job, your hobby, your relationship, getting a reservation at M Sushi, make it up. <laughs> Just pure, stupid, no real idea what I'm doing here, effort. Effort always yields a positive value, even if the outcome of the effort is absolute failure of the desired result. This is a rule of life. Just swing the bat and pray is not a bad approach to a lot of things. Number two, pay attention. If you're in a small submersible that looks like a giant kazoo and going to visit the Titanic, seven miles down at the bottom of the ocean, and the captain of the vessel is using a Game Boy controller, pay attention to that. What are you checking out down there? Oh, I see what happened. This ship sank. <laughs> now I understand why it never made it into port. <laughs> if the fish where you are have eyes like Shelley Duvall and a bendy straw with a work light hanging off their head, you do not belong there. <laughs> if the fish are going, I can't see a goddamn thing, you won't either. <laughs> Number three. Fall in love. It's easy to fall in love with people. I suggest falling in love with anything and everything, every chance you get. Fall in love with your coffee, your sneakers, your blue zone parking space. I've had a lot of fun in life falling in love with stupid, meaningless physical objects. The object I love the most is the clear barrel big pen, $1.29 for a box of 10. <laughs> I can fall in love with a car turn signal switch that has a nice feel to it. A pizza crust that collapses with just the right amount of pressure. I have truly spent my life focusing on the smallest things imaginable, completely oblivious to all the big issues of living. Find something where you love the good parts and don't mind the bad parts too much. The torture you're comfortable with. This is the golden path to victory in life. Work, exercise, relationships, they all have a solid component of pure torture, and they are all 1,000% worth Privilege is a word that has taken quite a beating lately. Privilege today seems to be the worst thing you can have. I would like to take a moment to defend it. <laughs> Again, a lot of you are thinking, I can't believe they invited this guy. <laughs> Too late. I say, use your privilege. I grew up a Jewish boy from New York. That is a privilege if you want to be a comedian. <laughs> story around my relatives, they would go, that's not how you tell that joke. The <laughs> prostitute has to be behind the drapes when the wife comes in. <laughs> you went to Duke. That is an unbelievable privilege. I now have an honorary doctorate of humane letters degree from Duke University. And if I can figure out a way to use that, I will. <laughs> I haven't figured anything out yet. I think it's pretty much as useful in real life. Uh, that woman's face was hilarious. <laughs>
show on my staff in the 90s, we had a lot of Harvard guys. They were fantastic, but I could never understand why these guys were so embarrassed about being from Harvard. They would never talk about it. They would never mention it. I'm not talking about Harvard now. I'm talking about the way it used to be. <laughs> You're never going to believe this. Harvard used to be a great place to go to school. <laughs> now it's Duke. <laughs> Agreed. Facts. Oh, so you can't do the work. Is that what you're telling me? You can't figure it out? This seems to be the justification of AI. I couldn't do it. This is something to be embarrassed about. The ad campaign for chat GPT should be the opposite of Nike. You just can't do it. <laughs> Making fake brains is risky. Frankenstein proved that. He was so dumb, he thought a monster needed a sport jacket. <laughs> it's not a wine tasting, we're terrorizing villagers. No one's gonna tell you, I'm sorry Mr. Stein, it's jackets only this evening. <laughs> what I like is we're smart enough to invent AI, dumb enough to need it, and still so stupid we can't figure out if we did the right thing. Making work easier, this is the problem. So obsessed with getting to the answer, completing the project, producing a result. Which in the experience, and who cares about the result? Stop rushing to what you perceive as some valuable endpoint. Learn to enjoy the expenditure of energy that may or may not be on the correct path. Now, if you have been at this amazing place for four years and still have no idea what you like, what you're interested in, or what you want to do in life, you are the luckiest ones here. Those of you that think you know what you want to do are very likely wrong, and perhaps even overestimating your ability to do it. You have convinced yourself that you know who you are and what's going on in the world. You don't know either. The less secure and confident you feel in the direction, the more surprises and excitement you will have in school. That's good. So the better the job you've done in finding a path for yourself, the more boring and predictable your life is going to be. <laughs> if you're sitting here today completely confused, feeling lost, adrift, and totally abandoned, you might even be a genie. I say congratulations. You win the Duke commencement ceremony for 2024. You are about to go on a hell of a ride. About work, you know how they always say nobody ever looks back on their life and wishes they spent more time at the office? Well, why? Why don't they? Guess what? Depends on the job. <laughs> you took a stupid job that you find out you hate and you don't leave, that's your fault. Don't blame work. Work is wonderful. I definitely will not be looking back on my life wishing I worked less. If that's not how you feel at work, quit. Oh. On your lunch break, disappear. Then people go, what happened to that guy? <laughs> I don't know, he said he was getting something to eat. Never came back. <laughs> the one thing I know about this game here, you are all worker bees, and I mean that as the highest compliment. I love bees. <laughs> Beautiful, amazing, elegant. Society. I made a cartoon movie about bees you may have watched as a child. If any of you felt slightly uncomfortable about the sexual undertones <laughs> in the relationship between Barry the bee and Vanessa in the forest who saves his life, I would like to apologize. <laughs> I may not have calibrated that perfectly, but I would not change it. And this is probably the biggest point I would like to make to you here today regarding humor. I'm going to try and reach across a couple generations here to tell you the most important thing I am confident that I know about life. I'm 70. I'm done. You are just starting. I only want to help you. The slightly uncomfortable feeling of awkward humor is okay. 
It's not something you need to face. I totally admire the ambitions of your generation to create a more just and inclusive society. I think it is also wonderful that you care so much about not hurting other people's feelings in the million and one ways we all do that every second of every day. It's lovely to want to fix those things, but all happens. But I need to tell you as a comedian, do not lose your sense of humor. You can have no idea at this point in your life how much you are going to need it to get through. Not enough of life makes sense for you to be able to survive it without humor. And I know all of you here are going to use all of your brains and muscle and soul to improve the world, and I know you're going to do a bang up job. And when you're done, as I am now, I bet the world, because of you, will be a much better place. But it will still not make a whole hell of a lot of sense. It'll be a better, different, but still pretty insane mess. And it is worth the sacrifice of an occasional discomfort to have some laughs. Don't lose that. Even if it's at the cost of occasional heart feelings, it's okay, you've got to laugh. That is the one thing at the end of your life you will not wish you did less of. Humor is the most powerful, most survival, essential quality you will ever have or need to navigate through the human experience. The other thing I see going on that throws a lot of people at you. throws a lot of people off these days is thinking, I've got to make as much money as I can. I personally believe the real game is that I When I started out as a comedian, I did not think I was funny. I thought I'm a little funny. Maybe I wouldn't have to be that funny. I just have to be funny enough to beat one person. And I can do that with a loaf of Wonder Bread and a jar of peanut A loaf of bread and some peanut butter. That was my actual plan. That's how you think when you do not have a dude education. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to have this super cool job, and cool is the word money's to be It's really just whatever you think is cool. So just go for what you think is the coolest. Money will be made eventually, somehow. Try not to think about it so much. I see this messing people up a lot. Put it to the side a little. Don't think about having, think about becoming. Having is fine, but focus on becoming. That is where it's at. And I know you're not really even listening to this speech, but that's okay. <laughs> I wouldn't either. You're graduating, you're thinking about yourself, or timing your mobile order from the Yala truck. <laughs> that's all cool. But the one thing I really do care about communicating to you is don't lose your humor. Forget the rest, forget your education, your degree, your privilege. All of you here would do fantastically well without any of it. All of you here, without question, are the best of the best. Just don't lose your humor. It's not an accessory. It's your Stanley Cup water bottle and a brutal long pipe. <laughs> and humor is not just for the stress relief or even just the simple fun of laughing, but for the true perspective of the silliness of all humans and all existence. That's why you don't want to lose it. Try to enjoy some of the dumbness of it all. That's the best life advice I can give you. I wish you luck. I wish you love. Thanks for the phony degree and the ridiculous outfit. <laughs> Class of 24, throw the hat out, let's get out of here! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 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 Master of Arts in Christian Studies. And I'll call him Bill Bogan, Dean of the University. <laughs> Please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present the illustrious candidates of the Fuqua School of Business who will lead with decency and have completed all requirements for the degrees of Master of Business Administration. <laughs> I confer upon you these degrees in the Fuqua School of Business, and I welcome you to the work 
of building our economic future through thoughtful and responsible management. Congratulations. <laughs> All right guys, 1.43, we got the coffee from Coco and Cinnamon here. Now, it is time to drive home and close it out. I'll see you in a bit. Let's hit the road. Boom. Ooh, ooh. All right, boom, 3.04, we teleported halfway there gas station didn't get any b-roll because people were screaming or didn't get any driving shots because people were screaming but halfway there see you in a bit at home all right guys camera died but look we are home sweet home back in the office back with all of our beautiful shoes bang and look at this little graduation present from charles she got me business cards sup well and then on the back little qr action runners let's up your best you can go to the website, find your next running shoe, or you can go to the YouTube. Beautiful. She's the best, dude. Now we got, now we're official. We are geared and ready to go. We got the MBA and we got business cards. I don't know where I'm going to put my degree. Maybe somewhere over here, but we're back in the house. 100 mile week in the books. I wanted to just quickly highlight the shoes I ran in this week. So we kicked it off with Max Road 6. I absolutely love this thing. Somebody requested me to do a double day in this, so that will be coming soon. Nice max cushion vibe, soft, bouncy foam. Reminds me of a more built-up SC Trainer V2, but this rocketed up that max cushion faves list right on the first run. So that was what we did Monday, Tuesday, double day in. Look at this guy here. Look at this. Puma DV8 Nitro 2. I actually don't know if this is what we did Tuesday, but we get, we did get, let me check. Hold on. Okay. Yes, I was right. So Tuesday, double day in this guy, still a great buy. And this week was all about reacquainting with some, some of the older shoes. So still a great buy for a deal right now. Dick's Sporting Goods, you can pick it up for 95 bucks. So if you want something a little bit faster, still soft and bouncy, but not as heavy as some of the max cushion shoes, a little bit more speed oriented. And that's great for wet weather and light trails. That's a DV8 Nitro 2. Then Wednesday, another 20 mile double day. Bang. Saucony Ride 17. I can't recommend this guy really over anything. It's it's a standard everyday running shoe, but it's heavier than a lot of the other competitors out there. It's firm. I don't have anything against firm shoes. I actually like firm shoes. And if you want a firm daily trainer, I suggest going for something like the Puma Velocity Nitro 3 or the A6 Nova Blast over this guy. But we did a 20 mile double day in the shoe. It was just okay, a little bit forgettable. And then Thursday, boom, recovery day, SC Trainer V2. Another fun shoe here, similar to the Max Road, but a little bit softer, probably gonna be a little bit less durable than the Max Road. And this was the 100 mile check-in because I never did a 100 mile review on this shoe. So this was a fun one to run in. You got the full carbon fiber plate and it still is a nice, enjoyable ride. And then long run, bang, back over here. We reacquainted with the Vaporfly for the 23 miles. Didn't learn anything new about the shoe. Still not a great shoe for longer time on feet for me. I much prefer shoes like the Endorphin Pro 4 or Audios Pro 4 for those marathon style runs. This is a good half marathon shoe, but not my favorite for distance. And then we closed out the week with i gotta unpack my suitcase here but boom 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 yeah close out the week here with two of my favorites right now vomero 17 still a great shoe after all these shoes that i've tested and basically everything that's on the floor that's not on the rack i brought in the office after the vomero and this is still one of my favorite daily trainers. It's just a simple shoe. 
and it works and it's under a hundred dollars right now and then this morning my favorite shoe to run in right now hoka skyward x full carbon fiber plate you got the bounce you got the soft foam so those were all the shoes for the 100 mile week and we didn't do a ton of workouts this week it was all about consistency and getting our miles in and it was important for me to close it out this week with a hundred because I know we're going to be putting up that degree somewhere over here. And it just felt like it was important to commit this week and reinforce our commitment to that 100, to ourselves, to the mileage, to running, to getting out there and up in our best, like Charlie got printed on our business cards here. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you want to see this week in terms of comparisons should i revisit any of these shoes i also have boop, some new shoes there to take out of the box let me know what other new shoes i should bring in the office i'm excited i'm reinvigorated you know seinfeld got me fired up he said do what's cool put the work in and worry about the results and the payoff later man and that's just that's how i already approach everything so we're even more fired up to just put the work in and live that hobby jogger life down up our best. So I got to unpack, hang out with the kids, do dinner, chop up the footage. I'll be back tomorrow with another video, baby. Let's go up your best. One more thing, guys. I got the new order of athletic. I usually just buy it from the grocery store, but this time I did the online order because you get some special stuff. I was hoping it would come before graduation weekend, but it didn't. So this is, I've got all stuff that you can't, you can't buy this in the stores, bro. So look at this. We got the American Pale, classic American Pale. I think this is going to taste like Budweiser, like a Bud Heavy. So we got the Walker Hayes Fancy Like. Boom. And isn't that a song? Wasn't that a viral trend, like the Fancy Like Applebee's? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, country singer songwriter Walker Hayes for easy drinking and simple living. Cool. And then we got the lemon rattler, nice and fruity. Charlie likes some of these more experimental ones. And then yeah, I got another order of the fancy like. And then this one is the Trailblazer. This is also a little bit of a fruitier light one. I had this one last year a ton, and it's pretty fire. It's a hoppy hells. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. If you know how to pronounce h-e-l-l-e-s let me know but yeah athletic my favorite non-alcoholic beer and ordering online is pretty cool because then you get to try some of this new stuff so bang there you go all right guys one more thing dinner here southern fiesta we have barbecue jackfruit sandwiches with the tempeh double protein plus a little vegan slaw on top the potatoes perfectly grilled look at that or perfectly roasted in the oven and the asparagus someone the other day said they weren't convinced on the, the vegan food i'm not trying to convince anybody but this is fire and it's what works for me so i will see you guys tomorrow look at this look at this beauty thank you charles happy mother's day happy mother's day, happy mother's day charles she still makes this on mother's day